Vikings Talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. You could say that, yes. You could say that. Um, it is a punt off, and, you know, both guys have been a – it's almost like they're carbon copies. It's, it's weird. You know, one guy – uh, screams down, has an amazing punt, and the next guy, you know, doesn't feel that pressure and follows it up with another big punt. And so you look at it, and, you know, I think both guys have been doing a great job throughout this camp. And, you know, we'll go back, check out the tape, look at the statistic that we've been p- compiling and putting together throughout this entire training camp and look at it and, and see who the better man is. Uh, but overall, I think both guys have been doing a good job. There he is, future NFL head coach and Vikings current special teams coordinator, Matt Daniels. We all we, all, we love that guy's energy. He's got uh, future future head coach energy vibes there for sure. And he was talking about what was supposed to be a punt off for the Vikings punter spot. But uh, that has actually been decided before the last preseason game, which we'll get to. Our guy Doogie breaking the news that uh, Jordan Berry is going to be released or has been released by the Vikings. So we'll talk about kind of what that means. I know Judd has some angst about the holding situation. So we'll definitely get into that. But uh, let's start the show with another piece of interesting Vikings news presented by our friends at TCL. Uh, TCL has award winning TVs for any budget, any space, all with stunning picture quality. And TCL makes more than just TVs, they offer mobile products, audio devices, home appliances. TCL, bringing you joy and simplicity through innovative technology. Learn more at TCL.com. This is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. Mackie, Judd, executive producer, Declan. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Uh, We both almost died this week. Judd had emergency appendectomy surgery a few days ago. I'm on day five of COVID, just uh, banished to my basement here. Have you sipped on any Surly's since you uh, were sliced open? Are you giving it a few more days? Uh, First of all, no. Unfortunately, actually, the the worst part, oh, the wound hurts, man. Don't talk about the wound. But anyway, here's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about summer is surly and I can't drink it. But you know who can? All of you out there. Surly surrogates. That's exactly right. And so here's what (laughs) I want. It might be a furious, logic bomb, supreme, any number, hell of, of their great beers. This weekend, I want you to drink a surly and then as we have said so often show us your cans hashtag pour one out for judd because if judd can't drink this fantastic beer there is more for you and so go on twitter at jay zolgad and show me your can so i can live vicariously through your consumption of the greatest beer around again a furious Logic bomb, I don't care. I just want to see your surly cans. Hashtag pour one out for Judd at Jay Zolgad. It will be much appreciated. It'll be a while till I'm back on the surly bandwagon. You can also pour one out for JC Treader and uh, my personal quest to manifest the JC Treader thing into existence for the Vikings. So, what have I been telling you guys for several months here on this show? My, Is your contract always- done now? My contract? Yeah, for, for this. You you said at, at one point I'm contractually obligated oh. to mention J.C. Treader once per show, and you lived up to that for quite some time. I, th- I guess it is. I th- I don't, it was kind of an open-ended contract until you know one thing gave one way or the other, and uh, the thing that gave is J.C. Treader announced his retirement this morning, and he spoke to SI.com. There's some really interesting stuff in here. So as we've been reporting on this show, and we don't always put our big J journalism uh, reporting hats on, although we do have those backgrounds in our career. But uh, I've been telling you guys, J.C. Treader, who by all accounts, pro football focus, has been one of the top five or six centers in the NFL the last few years. Knee problems, but they didn't prevent him from playing in games with Cleveland. Now, Kwesi was in Cleveland, so he would know more about J.C. Treader than anybody. Uh, But I've been telling you that J.C. Treader would love to play for the Vikings. The Vikings have shown no interest in Treader, and he confirmed that today to SI.com. He said, um, guys would be like, oh, how are your knees doing? And Treader says, I always said, my NFL PA president job is going to end my career well before my knees and, and uh, well before my knees and my career. And that's kind of what I had heard, too, that no team had even given him a physical to check the knees out. 
it'd be one thing if, you know, he failed a couple physicals or something or teams were a little bit worried about his, but they never even brought him in, the Vikings included. And so uh, he, here's the interesting part. He says that he wanted to put a bow on his childhood by playing for the Vikings because he cheered for the Vikings as a kid. Wow. And Treader says the Vikings nor any of the other six teams that his camp contacted this offseason reciprocated his interest. Quote, Minnesota never returned our call. And so with that, the Vikings are moving forward with Garrett Bradbury as their starting center and Austin Schlotman as right now their primary backup. So now that this is all out in the open for all of us to see and digest here, what do you make? I mean, J.C. Treader, 31 years old, um, he's saying that the knees got better as the season progressed. Again, no one like gave him a physical or an updated MRI or anything. So what do you make of the Vikings just not showing it? any interest at all whatsoever in J.C. Treader as an upgrade. Nobody blackballs like the National Football League. That's my first thing. Um, this is, in its own way, very very different circumstances, but in its own way, Kaepernick-like, which is when teams basically collude, which this is, make no mistake, and say, you know what, let's keep this guy out, they do it. And, and I don't know if it comes from the top of the mountain or where, but it's certainly nobody blackballs like th- this league. And I think Phil mentioned this to you as a possibility at the outset of our discussions. I said the knees are a problem, I'm sure, but I really think his his representation as the head of a union that, make no mistake, the league is continually trying to break, like they treat that union like crap. And and J.C. Treader's probably a very smart guy, and he's very effective. And so I'll start there. That I don't think the Vikings were given the option. I think the Vikings were basically told, no, nobody's touching him. That being said, I think it's too damn bad because. And I, I did a uh, a um, a afternoon Judd on this yesterday. You know. Despite the fact there's been no competition, I guess my question still is, what is the plan if Bradbury stinks? Which is very viable. Like, there well, is a chance... Schl- Schlotman is the plan. But yeah, he, he has, it's not but, like he has a track record of being exactly. this amazing but, setter. But, like, if you have to plug in a full-time guy, is Schlotman that that guy? I like some things I've seen, but they're preseason games against backups. So... Two thoughts. One is J.C. Treader almost certainly never had a chance to get a job anywhere. And the Vikings are doing as they're told. But two, yes, it bothers me because it's going to be a damn shame if one position derails an offense that beyond that, I think, can be very good. That's a shame. Treader continued in this Sports Illustrated article. I'll just going to read you this next paragraph. In Treader's estimation, finding the reason for this radio silence with teams not getting back to him isn't difficult. He describes his salary requests as modest, saying, not a veteran minimum salary, but well below the value I bring. And teams have cap space. Vikings have cap space. He says his right knee is fully ready for game action, having healed itself of the swelling issue by week eight last season and requiring no more draining for the rest of the season or offseason. Plus, Treader adds, no club has so much as requested an MRI or a physical to inspect it. This despite Pro Football Focus rating him as the league's fifth best center entering the season. Uh, there's also a little quip in here about how, boy, maybe he pissed a lot of pissed a lot of people off as the president of the NFL Players Association. Now he plans to just sort of double down on um, his next two-year term as NFL PA president. So... This is so fascinating to me. And again, like the, the, the wild card here is Quasi spent time with him in Cleveland. So is there something that even goes beyond the NFL PA president stuff? Is, the, is there a personality thing? Again, I, this is just pure speculation on my part. I do not, uh, I'm not going to pretend to have spent time in the locker room with J.C. Treader. But uh, it just it, it's kind of amazing to me that if your goal is to win football games, and I think anyone from fans to media to the Vikings' own internal scouting department and coaching staff, you say, all right, what are the most, what are the weakest links? Take all the starting players here, offense mm-hmm. and defense. What are the things that you are the most worried about? Mm-hmm. I think Garrett Bradbury 
is probably number one or number two across the board. I think internally they would probably say that. I mean, hell, they're like emergency trying Chris Reed on the second team, trying to move him from guard to center, right? So when yeah. you have a chance to kick the tires on an upgrade, um, boy, I mean, how vindictive do you have to be toward his role as the as the president of the Players Association or or what other information do you have about him behind the scenes or whatever it may be? Because I don't think you can say that it's knee-related if you never even... Did any homework checking out how his knee is right now? Right. I think it's one. I think it's one thing. I, I think the league as a whole d- decided he will not have a, a job. Um, if I'm not mistaken, too, in its in their first preseason game, the Browns lost uh, the guy who was going to be Treader's replacement, and then I think his backup uh, in practice a couple of days after that got hurt. J.C. Treader could have gone back to Cleveland, but I bet they didn't call. So yeah, yeah this is look. When this league decides you're done, you're done. Amazing. And it's just, I hope for the Vikings' sake that Bradbury has made improvements because they are going to be in for a very rude awakening against really good defensive tackles in those first two games if he has not. Because there's only so much that, that you can cover for interior pressure. And interior pressure, not just with Kirk, is the downfall of many quarterbacks. So... I hope that they are right, and I, I hope that they've come up with a system uh, to either have Kirk get rid of the ball quicker or Bradbury's improved, gain weight. Uh, unfortunately, what we saw in training camp practices did nothing to assure me that that's the case. Yeah, the other, the other tough thing here, too, is you could say, well, yeah, what if you get in you know, week two or week three and the obvious becomes apparent again and Bradbury's in over his head? Couldn't you call Treader then? Well, the problem is if you give a retired offensive lineman a month to – start losing weight and stuff like right. the, these guys, you know, hell look at Matt Burke and Jeff Saturday and our guy, Alex Boone, like they'll, they'll drop 75 pounds overnight once they decide they're done playing. So I don't know that you can just kind of, well, let's just see, you know, if, if something actually needs to change once we get it in front of us in week one, week two, I mean, hell that guy might be down 50 pounds by week two for all, for all we know, he well, might be losing weight the last month. Maybe he exactly. decided a month ago, he wasn't going to sign somewhere. So. Exactly. But I mean, how it's remarkable that you wouldn't bring him in. Dude, he's, he's flat out saying, Just I want to play for you. Yeah. I want to bring all of my experience. I want to bring all of my talent to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I want to help you fix one of your biggest problems. Yeah. And you said, no, we're not even going to call you back. Right. It's so interesting to me. But he ghosted him. Here we are. So uh, the dream is dead. The J.C. Treader dream is dead. I'm disappointed. Unfortunately. I'm not going to lie. This I'm is a, oh yeah, and just to be clear, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. I would have kicked yeah. the tires. Yep, for sure. Kick the tires. But, man, this league is so vindictive. Like, there are so many. It's a fun sport, and it's a great sport to, to discuss and talk about and follow. But it is as cutthroat as it gets. Because I'm telling you right now, this is an understanding of every team. We are not kicking the tires on this guy. We want him out mm. of locker rooms. Because that's what they're they're uh, scared of, right? They don't want him talking to young players. Hey, here's what we should get. Here's what we do. You know, they don't want that. They don't want the message spread because they want to suppress the union as long as possible. And God forbid Mr. Guaranteed Contract and J.C. Treader talk and come up with an idea that might help players. So, yeah. So, yep. So there it is. The dream is officially dead on J.C. Treader. Uh, the other piece of breaking Vikings news here, thanks to our friend Darren Doogie Wolfson. Uh, too bad this didn't happen right before our scoop session on Mackie and Judd, but uh, he tweeted this out. So Jordan Berry is going to be released by the Vikings. And that means that uh, Ryan Wright is the only punter on the roster and also now the only holder on the roster. So what do you make of Ryan Wright winning the punting and holding battle against Jordan Berry here? The punting battle, I'm fine with. Um, I think he's got a big leg. That's great. He probably can do more. And I, I don't know exactly what they want because teams now have very specific requests. It used to be in my day. Punt the ball as far as you can. Let's see what happens. Now it's uh, hang time, and we don't want you to punt deep, but but don't outkick your coverage, blah, blah, blah. So 
On that note, you know what? Go for it. If this guy's good, that's great. On the holding thing, I'm telling you right now, I'm sounding a damn alarm right now. I'm mm. sounding an alarm. And I am not doing it lightly. And you can say, oh, this is typical Zolgad. It'll be fine. They're going to, to the Super Bowl. All right. Here's where I'm sounding an al alarm. Again, I don't go to training camp practices when I can, of course. And I'm not, not trying to recover from an appendectomy for my own good. Greg Joseph has had a marvelous camp. Everything I've seen has been spot on. The last time I watched him kick, he missed two kicks. Guess who was holding for them? Ryan Wright. Hmm. Um, Were the laces and, in or out? And how Dan. Ex exactly. But how many times, you guys, how many times have we talked about the importance of the relationship, and not just us, people that know a lot more about this art than we do, about the relationship between long snapper, holder, and kicker? And that it takes time to form that bond, and that bond is incredibly important. And and the relationship there is absolutely key. The fact that Joseph missed two in training camp, I'm not going to dismiss that. Because, I mean, the, he was otherwise, as far as I know, with Jordan Berry holding, he was perfect, okay? So I'm not go going to say, oh, that's just a fluke. I don't know that. I used to think it's a holder. Who cares? I learned from people a lot smarter than I am again, that it matters. So I think that this takes, I think that this is taking some risks and I don't, and I hope it's worth it because Greg Joseph was kicking extremely well with Barry holding and now he's got to work full time with a guy who he basically has, I would say in fairness, limited experience with. Well, they, they obviously considered all of this, right? It's not like they're 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 not oblivious to no the holding chemistry needed, and um, so I, I guess I'm I'm sure they talked to Greg. Jo I, I don't think they consulted Greg Joseph and said, "Hey, who should we cut?" But I but I'm sure they've talked to Greg Joseph. Hey, how do you feel with this holder versus this holder? Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I guess if. If there is a vast difference between the holding capabilities of Jordan Berry and Ryan Wright, meaning that let's say Jordan Berry is this amazing holder, has this amazing chemistry with um, with uh, Greg Joseph, right. but you decided, yeah, but for you know for punting technique purposes, and we think we can get an extra couple yards per punt or a couple extra dropped inside the twenty, like I wouldn't sacrifice. I guess what I'm saying is I'd rather sacrifice a little on the punting side to assure chemistry with my kicking unit and my field goal unit. But I'm also confident that they considered all of this throughout the entire process. So, uh. Right. I guess my problem is this. There is no margin for error. September 11th, if anything goes wrong in the kicking game, that's your fault then. Like, like you don't have like, oh, it'll take four games, and then the chemistry's there. I don't have four games. Are you blaming any missed kick in week one on if, the holding situation? If it's a kick that misses. Preemptively here? If it's a kick that misses by a small amount, absolutely. Absolutely. So you, so you, so you have now exonerated Greg Joseph I am from saying any and all I saw blame Greg, going Greg forward. Joseph has looked like he's headed to Canton, Ohio, with Jordan Berry kicking. And when Ryan Wright kicked... He looked a little bit like um, uh, like Blair Walsh at times. So yes, I am saying right now there is no there's two things on special teams here I've grown concerned up, about, and, and this is the big picture thing. Special teams a very important part of this game that is often dismissed too quickly. And the two things are this: the holder, punt returner. If there are any mistakes in the game against the Packers absolutely a key game if there are any mistakes with those two things then that's your fault because you needed to get this right it's also weird because this is now uh, uh kevin seifert just tweeted this out too this is the sixth different primary punter over the last seven seasons for the vikings so assuming mm -hmm. ryan wright has the job for this year last year's obviously jordan Berry. uh jordan berry the previous two seasons dustin colquitt in 20, uh, 2018, it was Matt Wild. 2017, Ryan Quigley. 2016, Jeff Locke. It just kind of reminds me of, like, this is a hilarious comparison, but I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, kind of like... Brit, it, wasn't it Britain Colquitt? Was Britain, Britain Colquitt. There was two Colquitts. Yeah, I think brothers. Dustin was the other one. Yeah, that, I knew it, what you Seifert, meant. I knew Seifert what got you meant. Well, no, Seifert got it wrong. Seifert yeah. got it wrong. Not I knew one. what you meant. 
it kind of reminds me of like when a band for whatever reason is like changing the bass guitarist like it, it, it might seem minuscule because it's like yo, know, it, you know the bass is important keeps you on keeps you on rhythm and it's 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 good it's good for the band but why are we why are we constantly changing the basses like we uh, the entire ingredients of the band works okay like we have a good singer we have a good guitarist we have a good drummer why are we rotating a different basis on tour with us every other year why are we doing this and it just it is kind of it it just doesn't seem necessary so where I kind of fall on it okay well. Uh, I just like the fact that they have a 250 pound punter now. So he looks like a linebacker. You want to run some uh, some fakes and some tricks from back there? I'd rather give me the 250 pound truck standing up with the football. Love me a fake punt. What's more intimidating? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna snap it to the holder, and now he is gonna get up and do something with the football. If it's if it's scraggly, wiry Jordan Berry, or if it's 250 pound, right? What are their salaries? I wonder if this also saves some. It probably does. I'm sure. But does. what does that savings do for I know, you? No, no, I'm not. I, no. I'm not defending it. I'm it's saying not March. I'm trying to think through why. I'm trying to think through why. Uh, I, I flat out will tell you right now. Into the I will go uh, on the record. Situation. I don't like this from a holding standpoint, and I'm not backing off that, despite the fact that oh, Judd, he's just uh, it's an alarmist. This is a great move, Skull. I know you're curious about uh, what their what the PFF grade last year was for for Jordan Berry, and it was not good. He was the 30th ranked. Well, let me let me uh, actually let me uh, get some of the punters out of here that maybe only punted for one game. So if we if we adjust for sample size here yep. of the 35 qualified punters last year, Jordan Berry ranked 24th in overall PFF punt grade. Okay. So again, I don't know. Well, then you know what. Then sign your guy at the start of camp and have him work exclusively with your kicker. You want hang time, right? Hang time is a good thing yeah, yes. in the NFL. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Jordan Berry ranked 29th out of 35 punters in average hang time last year. Okay. Then you know what? Ryan Wright's your guy from day one. I want the reps. When I'm out there sweating, I want to see them working together constantly. I just love that you have already exonerated to run Greg teams Joseph from takes a lot any of blame. <clears throat> that, that if, if it's a bear, if he barely misses, it is on the holder. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, man. This is the most worked up I think we've seen you since you got your abs sliced open for emergency oh, appendectomy God, on Saturday. Hurt. That would just not good. Um, by the way, as you're sitting around uh, ordinarily unable to do anything with, uh, you know, home solutions or fixes, and now you're even sort of more, more incapacitated, unable. I'm yeah. sure Finch Home <laughs> Solutions is even more helpful and valuable to you. They are, but you, you know what? Uh, uh, Pre-appendectomy or, or not, Finch Home Solutions, they are people who take care of electronics around your house. And you know what? Judd Zolgad won't touch. Like, I'm not smart, but I'm not completely stupid. And you would have to be crazy to say, you know, we've got a problem with a, a, a fuse box or something, an electrical panel. Honey, I'll fix it. That's a way to cause damage and potentially burn down your house. And Finch Home Solutions, they are going to come to your house. They are going to fix the problem and they are going to do it in a safe, smart way because that's what they, they do. And right now, they're offering a free home safety inspection. That's right, free home safety inspection to all Purple Daily fans. They can take care of everything, faulty outlets, flickering lights, installing or repairing electrical panels, all of the things that you should not try and do, Finch can do. 612-357-2604. 612-357-2604. Finchhomesolutions.com. Finchhomesolutions.com. And again, a free home safety inspection. Give them a call. It, isn't it kind of funny uh, how at, at the end of the day, the things that we are generally over the last few years the most uptight and nervous about with the Vikings, be it offensive line uh and and the kicking situation yep are kind of the things now that i'm not that worried i i i think they're going to be fine i think it's going to be 90 percent on greg joseph and 10 percent on the holding situation and greg joseph i think is a good kicker so i'm not as panicked about the kicking situation as you clearly are but please but like you make a valid point that yeah they're kind of they're kind of throwing a wrench into this chemistry thing here and uh, and they've now and they now rejected J C Treader's right. overtures to fix the center spot. That like at the end of the day, here we are, and they're kind of tinkering with the kicking situation, and they've refused an upgrade at center. And we'll just kind of see what happens going into the Packers game. 
Okay, quickly. DEFCON center. What? And, and it's five. Is, five is, five is, is the worst, right? One is the what? highest. Yeah, one is the worst. One's, one's the bad. Worst. Five is stable. DEFCON two center. Two. Two. Yeah, it's 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 a two. We are uh, armed forces are ready to deploy. That that What's is three? DEFCON two. Three is air force is ready to mobilize in fifteen minutes. I'm three. Oh, so, uh, so Dex, center, Dex and I are higher than you. Oh, I, oh no, 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 no. I'm no two. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I goofed up. Despite the fact I heard it, it's not my fault. COVID brain surgery. No, I I'm with co- you guys. I have COVID brain. No, you I've can't. still got COVID brain from my COVID in Christmas time. I still can't remember. John doesn't remember Dex. anything anymore. It's You're terrible. also just getting older too. So it it's also that. that doesn't. Happen. I'm 52, yeah, but, boots, but two. I'm boots sorry. are on the ground. Boots are on the ground. Death two. two. I'm two as well. All right, kicker, or or holder. Uh, holder a, a, a five. Is yeah. there something lower? I'm not. I, this does not concern me like it concerns you. What's four? Uh, four is increase in te- uh, above normal readiness. So yeah, like, like the, yeah, DEFCON five is just normal readiness, and it's the okay. lowest state I'm of four. readiness. I'm four. Okay. I'm concerned. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm probably. I'm probably I'm probably four. I don't know on on the on the kicker and holder. I'm above normal readiness, but I'm not ready to like start calling the military and and start freaking out yet. I'm four. Yeah. I think where I where I will pause a little bit here is people do make fun of Judd for always you know sounding the alarm and you could there's a little boy who cried wolf sometimes to to Judd, I agree but with Judd that. also has an uncanny ability to sniff out things. Maybe par- partially because he's just always looking for things that could go wrong, but <laughs> um, but but you do tend to to sniff things out as the as other people are like sleeping on something or not thinking about something, and you will say, "Oh, this might be a big deal. You better yeah. watch this." You know and what? So, you know. I don't like to I don't like to tinker with things that don't need tinkering with, and I like to change things when they should be be changed the center you should have a plan there the punter i'm just saying this if you said you know jordan barry's statistics aren't great then from day one at training camp i want my holder who i know against the packers is going to play i want him holding because i want them to work together and i don't think that's that well did, did like they not stretch. split the holding duties 50 50 from what you no. can tell Oh, okay. no, no, no. The day that uh, Joseph missed two with Wright, I think Wright held for two or three. Okay. And, and and Barry held for the rest. And so maybe some of this is just we tend to have a little bit more post-traumatic kicker syndrome in our systems here watching this team that maybe, maybe it is fairly yeah. standard practice that, hey, you got three weeks, two weeks, whatever, until the regular season starts. You got time to go, just go work for like five you know, hours a day building chemistry. You've held before. It's you not know what changed me, deal. Phil? When, when we were basically given a play-by-play of the process, when Longwell joined us, when somebody was struggling, I forget whom at this point, it might have been Carlson, and he's like, you don't understand about this and that, and I didn't, right? And like he sort of walked us through the process of how important the chemistry is between long snapper, holder, and kicker. That's where I sort of flipped to, to be like, oh, there, there was a lot I didn't know there. So mm-hmm. that's where I changed. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to get into here uh, a, a battle of wits between you two guys this week. This is called the Random Viking of the Week on Purple Daily. And Ooh. Declan and I have now teamed up against Judd sort of every other week so that uh, yeah, we can try and cut into this 14 point lead he has over mm. the year or so that we've done this. Feeling good today. Judd has a 31 to 17 lead over Declan and now myself. Uh, I beat you last week, guessing Travis Taylor correctly. You did. I'm actually 2 and 0 against Judd. I've got Andre Allison yeah. and yeah. Travis Great Taylor. Dex yeah. has a tell. Receivers. <laughs> yeah. Marcus Robinson next week. <laughs> Dang it. That, that do by receivers. What did I do the first week? Well, Andre Allison, Allison and Travis oh, Andre Allison. Yeah, you well, got Andre, Allison. Andre Allison was more like of a special teams kind of. He was more known for, for his special teams. Than he he's was. a receiver. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> he's a receiver. I mean, right, okay. he, he returned some puns. But <laughs> All right, how about when Judd sure. does random bike with me, he can, do, he can do his own thing, and I'll do my own thing, and Phil does his thing. My so. tell? Holders. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be. This well, man Judd played on one knee. Ugh. Um, this episode of Random Viking of the Week is presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. Federated's been around for over 100 years. 
They're all about maximizing the success of businesses around Minnesota and beyond. And uh, they're also all about face-to-face, eye-to-eye relationships, fostering long-term trust. And they will apply all of their four cornerstones, which are equity, integrity, teamwork, and respect to your business. Find out how they can help you at Federated. Federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. All right, I give out a series of clues. You guys can guess up to three times incorrectly, and then you are eliminated. We'll start with this clue here. Random Viking of the Week. Originally hails from Reedsville, North Carolina. Oh, Reedsville. Beautiful town. ACC country. Or maybe it's Reidsville. I don't know. R-E-I-D-S-ville. If you can't give out the right clues, I'm done. (laughs) Uh, This random Viking of the Week played college football in the Big South. All right. This random Viking of the Week. I have no idea either, Dex. Yep. This random Viking week hasn't tweeted in a while, but he does have 22,000 followers. His last tweet was, quote, anyone have a Fortnite code to spare? Okay. Never got into Fortnite, but yeah, it's not apparently this, this guy did. 22,000 followers. Okay, that's good. It's not for an athlete that's not mm-hmm. unbelievable. Okay. All right, this random Viking of the week loves to signal first down. Jarius Wright. This random Viking of the week is a former second round draft pick. This random Viking of the week. Oh, oh, I'll take a guess. Jerome Simpson. Oh, that's probably it. There it is. Jerome Simpson. After what? Five where, clues. Where, good. where was the Pelicero one? Uh, he has an affinity for Tom Presso was one of oh, my clues Oh, that would have given here. it away. Tom Presso. Uh, famous for his ability to flip. He has the famous flip into the front flip into the end zone. Was one sentenced to 15 days in jail, 200 hours of community service. And three years probation for having too much weed stored in his possession at home. Yeah, it's not ideal. I remember that. So, uh, yep. uh, De- Declan, you were on the right position there, but uh, the and the right the right era. I think those res- guys might have played together. But the receivers keep did. coming. A lot of receivers. I believe it's Pulse. four straight receivers here in random Viking of the week, and uh, and five in the last six weeks. So we're on a receiver roll here. So congrats to Judd Zolgad for ripping off. A victory. You also had Moritz Boringer correct two weeks ago. Good God. Gus Ferrat, Nate Burleson, John Sullivan, uh, and Jasper Brinkley in recent weeks. I love Jasper Brinkley. Great so, special uh, teams player. So that victory was presented by Livia Weight Control Centers, Judd. That's, uh, that's right. In fact, I am down 40 pounds since last September, and here's the best part. I am keeping that w- weight off. Dawn looked at me, and she said, you've lost all this weight, Judd. How can I? And I said, you can join, too. She's down 16 pounds. So the Zolgad team is down 50-plus pounds, and here's the most important thing, keeping it off. And I-, I want you to join now. Anniversary sale. Join the program, 50% off. How? Call 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A. Dot com check that them out and start your journey to a weight loss that will remain and that's the most important thing a weight loss livia.com awesome all right thanks for hanging out with us here thanks for uh, helping us grind through uh, the the injury report that we've been on one more day to all go week here we can well, rest one, up a little bit one more day for what friday to to grind through it i expect well, you're going to gonna, you're you're going to be Monday. magically fine well, yeah, it's just pain now. Like, it's just pain. It's grinding through pain. Football. This is football. <laughs> Joe right. Burrow, you better be good in week one. All right, that's Judd uh, with his thoughts from Go, Joe. the hospital bed. See you guys tomorrow.